We picked our honey badger up at Q today. Came with this nice pink case, very discreet. Um, we dropped a T2 on it, put a Frank Proctor sling and some QDs. Um, let's see. Just threw in some Barnes 110 grain. And uh, while we were there, uh, we grabbed the shorter handguard. Comes with a manual, some tools, um, stickers. It's got the Blue Force Gear uh, magazine pouch accessory and some of the case accessories. Um, I use a Vertex bag, backpack, so this will be great for the uh, EDC mag section to drop in that so you can use it in other backpacks and bags. And uh, I'll probably swap over the short hand guard so I can also transport this in a backpack, not just the carrying case. But it looks great. Came with the Honey Badger suppressor. I'll talk more about it throughout this video. Hey guys, so I'm out on the range today and we are uh, putting the first few rounds through the um, Honey Badger by Q. Uh, this is a 7.5 inch barrel. It has the Honey Badger can. These are matching serial numbers. So this is, we got the 139 with the 139 can. Um, this is a PDW. Uh, it's got their, um, their little micro stock. It is a single position, well, two position stock. So locked all the way out and then collapsed. Um, it's got a Radian, um, it's got a Radian Q charging handle. Uh, it's got some pretty cool features. It's got the uh, shielding around the uh, bolt release, um, ambidextrous controls. It does have the full auto uh, markings, but it is this is only a SBR semi-auto configuration. Uh, it's got the 45 levers on it the uh, American Trigger Corp uh, trigger. It's got the slim Magpul grip. Um, it's a proprietary upper and lower receiver, so it does not take standard AR-15 handguards. Um, Q is manufacturing AR-15 handguards uh, that they will be selling, but these are a more narrow underneath the Picatinny rail area, so it has a proprietary handguard. Um, this comes from the factory with the full length handguard that I don't have here. Uh, we run our guns pretty hot, so I didn't want to light my hand on fire. Um, I put a Nordic, um, this is a Nordic QD, uh, M-Lock QD mount here, and it has the factory QD mount in the rear of the stock. Um, it's got an SI Industries, or Strike Industries um, dust cover, and it is a nice tiny and very light package um, it's extremely quiet we put the Frank Proctor sling on which is nice because it adjusts really quickly and it can get nice and snug up um, if you were gonna carry this as a PDW though it's actually a little bit more convenient to have like a single point on this configuration because without the can on if you're just running uh, one of their cherry bombs which is their muzzle device this thing would fit perfectly right under your arm in a single point um, we're going to be running some Sig Sauer subsonic 220 grain um, ammunition. We also have uh, Fioki. These are 150 grain uh, full metal jacket supers. And I also have a mag here of some Barnes uh, TAC X 110 grain supers. Um, my friend John Hollister said if you need to stop something that's made out of meat, this is the this is the round to do it with. So uh, the Honey Badger does come with these standard GI mags. Um, I have the, a couple others that are already loaded up, um, but we're just going to be running this one. And we just ran it with some P mags, and it ran pretty good with P mags. So we'll uh, get some video of it shooting. All right, so this is going to be the first shot through um, the Q Honey Badger in 300 blackout. Uh, we're running Sig Sauer subsonic 220 grain uh, full metal jacket rounds right now. And I'm just going to shoot into the sand so you can hear how quiet it is. Maybe it doesn't like that mag. Wow. That's quiet. 
buy it. So we have three different types of ammo in here. I'm going to shoot into the berm so you can hear the difference uh, between two types of super and one sub. Uh, the first round is the Barnes Tac X. That's a 110 grain supersonic um, bonded hollow point. The second one is the Fioki 150 grain supersonic. And then the last is the 220 grain SIG. So. Hear how quiet the difference is? The Fioki and the Barnes sounded very similar. You still get the bullet crack, it's still going super. And then it switches over to that sub and the gun completely transforms. Chuck is shooting the Fioki 150 grain. Dude, that thing hits like a truck. Solid. It smells great, too. All that fresh factory lubricant. Oh, yeah. Come on. Doesn't like the cold. Pants. Ooh. I don't like that. There we go. It's a little cold out. We're learning that this needs to break in a little bit. Doesn't like PMAGs as much as it likes the GIs. Probably why it comes with GIs. Wow, got hit right in the nose. Oops. Get a lot of blowback. Burns my eyes. <laughs> Gotta breathe through your mouth more. Suck it in. Drop the mag. Gosh, it's so quiet. Pull that ball back. <laughs> it's going in my eye. It's getting, it's getting toasty. You know the internet's gonna make fun of you for how far you come off the trigger. Oh yeah, I'm not a I'm not a speed shooter. Marine. Just wrapping up our day on the Honey Badger. Gonna put a few more hundred rounds through it. Um, really liking everything so far. It's super light, super quiet. It just feels great in the hands. I think for a PDW, a one point sling might be a little bit better for like a PDW uh, type application. But if you're running this in a class, uh, a two-point would definitely be more comfortable. Um, it's definitely, it holds up pretty well. There's a little bit of wear there uh, from snapping it in. Um, this finish is awesome, but it's going to get pretty dirty pretty quick. You can see how dirty the magwell's already getting from blowback. A uh, couple things about it. I mean, I don't have anything bad to say about this gun. Um, I might put, like, maybe an extended magazine release here. Um, I do wish it came, it has a quarter inch drive here on the M-Lock handguard. Um, that quarter inch drive, I have been building cars my whole life and I still don't own a quarter inch, uh, wrench. <laughs> so 
So I had to go out and buy one. And the quarter inch wrench I bought was still a little wide. It was a little wonky to get in there. I actually had to put it on the sander to get it narrow enough to uh, remove. Um, outside of this right here, I mean, I don't, I have no, I have nothing bad to say about this gun at all. I'm happy with it. I historically have had poor luck with these Raptors on uh, short guns. I've had them blow out the top of the receivers and wear them out. I have no issues with this. There's a little bit of blowback coming out, but this is a fresh factory gun. So it's got some pretty heavy uh, lubrication in there that haven't hasn't blown out yet. Um, outside of that, it's fantastic. I'll probably uh, do another video with the full length handguard on, bring a little temperature gauge, see how hot it gets. Um, when you do have the full length handguard on, though, basically all these M lock panels from the can forward are rendered are rendered useless. <laughs> you can't really fit anything. Um, you can't really fit any uh, accessories on the handguard forward other than the pick rail. So that might be my only complaint about the full length one. And I could touch the suppressor through the M lock on the full length. So that's why I switched over the shorty because we do we do run our guns um, hot and uh, hot and fast. So, but for a hunting application where you need to put some longer optics, maybe some night vision on the front if you're hunting pigs or something like that, um, you know the longer handguard wouldn't be a problem. Guys, click like, subscribe, check us out, leave a comment. We love to hear feedback.